Sentence. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We spend the hour looking at the fall of the Syrian government and its impact on the Middle East and worldwide. After armed forces entered the capital city of Damascus Sunday, bringing an end to President Bashar al-Assad's regime and his family's more than 50-year rule. Armed opposition groups have overthrown al-Assad's regime in Syria following a lightning 12-day offensive. Assad has fled to Russia, where he's been granted political asylum. Assad's family had ruled Syria with an iron grip for more than half a century. Thousands of Syrians living in exile have poured back into Syria, while tens of thousands of prisoners held by the Assad government have been freed. At the Sidnaya prison in Damascus, rescue workers are now trying to access underground cells at a site that's been described as a human slaughterhouse. The uprising was led by Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, or HTS, a Turkish-backed group listed as a terrorist organization by the United States and the United Nations. Members of the group spoke on Sunday after seizing Syria's state television station. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, by the grace of God Almighty, the city of Damascus has been liberated. The tyrant Bashar al-Assad has been toppled, and all the unjustly detained persons from the regime's prisons have been released. The Fatah Damascus Operation Room calls upon the Mujahideen brothers and citizens to preserve all the properties of the free Syrian state. Long live a free and independent Syria for all Syrians of all sects. As video showed <clears throat> prisoners streaming out of Assad's notorious prisons, others celebrated inside Assad's luxurious presidential palace. Scenes of celebration erupted across major Syrian cities. These are just a few voices from Aleppo, from Homs, and from the capital, Damascus. This is something else, something else. May God help this country, and congratulations to all. This is the happiest day of my life. We were reborn. This is the day when the believers rejoice with God's victory. Thank God. He gave us more than we deserve. Just some advice. Be united and do not allow foreigners to come between you. Our happiness is immense. It's priceless. Thank God we have no losses, and no one has harmed anyone. We are just happy with our victory. We are also happy for the prisoners who have been released after years in prison. May God protect the rebels and grant them victory. First of all, I thank God for granting us the chance to see this place once more. After 10 years of fleeing Homs, I am returning today with my head held high in pride. Homs is free now. This is the Homs we dreamed of. I am a mechanical engineer. For years, we have been waiting for this day. We have been resisting. We have been enduring. We have been holding on. And we have been waiting for this day until the regime fell. And finally, the regime has fallen. From now on, the Syrian people are one. 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 Israel responded to the uprising in Syria by invading and seizing part of Syria's Golan Heights and bombed a Syrian air base and weapons depots. The United States carried out dozens of airstrikes inside Syria, targeting areas held by the Islamic State. Meanwhile, in northern Syria, Turkish-backed armed groups have seized the city of Mambij, which had been controlled by U.S.-backed Syrian Kurdish forces. President Joe Biden welcomed the Assad regime's downfall as a historic opportunity. After 13 years of civil war in Syria, more than half a century of brutal authoritarian rule by Bashir Assad and his father before him, rebel forces have forced Assad to resign his office and flee the country. We're not sure where he is, but there's word that he's in Moscow. At long last, the Assad regime has fallen. Okay. For more on all of this, we begin in Paris with Yassine Al-Hajj Saleh, a Syrian writer, dissident, former political prisoner. He was jailed in Syria 
for 16 years, from 1980 to 1996. He's the author of several books, including The Impossible Revolution, Making Sense of the Syrian Tragedy, also co-founder of the award-winning independent media platform, um, uh, Jamaria.net. Welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us, Yassine. If you can respond, you were out in the streets of Paris yesterday, celebrating with many other Syrians. Um, Assad is now in Russia, where he's been granted asylum. Your response to what has happened and the lightning speed, would you say, that it's happened in this last phase of the overthrow of the Assad regime? Among um, um, Hello, Ami, and thank you for having me. So, among hundreds of people, yesterday I was at the um, uh, Republic Square in Paris. We were uh, overwhelmed by emotions. Uh, mine, I guess, similar to everybody else, crying, laughing, and breathing. It is a rare moment of um, convergence of mourning and happiness, and just feeling alive. Uh, my, on the personal level, I lived almost all my life under this. Uh, um, genocidal regime, and I felt as if tight hands were on my neck, on my throat, and I, for the first day, I, um, um, I regained the uh, ability to breathe. So it is, uh, it is, it is a great day, glorious day. Uh, everybody, I guess, and of course myself included. Uh, have many layers of feeling about this day. We need to turn out this dirty, criminal, discriminatory, fascist, and very reactionary. I, I guess this is the right word to describe the Assad regime, because many in the West think that it is modernist, it is progressive, far from it. So. Um, uh, we, we needed to turn out this uh, page, and we are sure that many pages with difficulties, with hardships, with crises, with struggles, with problems, are ahead of us. But the forever is over, and yesterday was the first day of history with, with all its problems and tensions. and. Uh, and of course, uh, I mean um, uh, apprehensions. So it, it was a mixed feeling, uh, uh, and uh, there are many elements that um, for hope. And of course, there are other elements uh, that um, I'll, I'd like to talk about, if you allow me. Yes. Uh, why don't you continue? But why don't you start off by grounding us in your own experience? I mean, we're sitting here looking at the Sednaya prison, the freeing of thousands of prisoners, uh, many women, as you see them being told that they are now free. Um, if you can talk about your own experience, tell us about the Sednaya prison and its significance, and talk about why people were imprisoned. So, um, um, I, I, um, in my years in jail, I was uh, not in Sednaya prison, and in those days, in the 1980s and 90s, it was not the slaughterhouse, as Amnesty International said some seven years ago. Uh, early 2017, I guess, in uh, a very good report. Uh, it was before Sednaya, it was Tadmor prison, in which I spent only my last year of the 16 years, after I finished my sentence, by the way. I mean, look, I was arrested in 1980s, 80. I was among uh, among hundreds of my comrades brought to a Supreme State Security Court only in April 1992. So at that time, I was in jail for 11 years and four months. I spent, I, um, it took two years to get a sentence, and I got a sentence of 15 years. Instead of being released, uh, by the way, uh, the day before yesterday was the 44 anniversary of my 
arrest. Instead of being released um, on uh, 1995, I was sent with 30 other people to Tedmore Prison uh, for an extra year. And Tedmore Prison is the Sydney of today. It is the most brutal jail in Syria. It is, well, it is uh, a torture camp. It is not a prison. It is It is like Sydney today. These places are the factories to manufacture the essence of power of, uh, in Syria. They are places of torture, of um, hunger, of humiliation, and of extreme despair. Uh, and uh, I believe that Tens of thousands. You know that we now we have 131 people, at least, we don't know about their fate. So many of them uh, may be killed. The League of Sydney prison, uh, uh, former prisoners, released a report uh, a year and a half ago, I guess, and they talked that maybe 30,000 to 35,000 were killed in Sydney prison, uh, uh, mostly under torture, and some of them are, were, were executed. And uh, many, I believe, uh, died of hunger and of diseases. So it is, we've been under this inhuman condition for 54 years, which is more than a half of the whole Syrian uh, history uh, as, uh, as a modern polity. Syria appeared only after the First World War, and more than half of its history uh, is under the Assad rule. Very thuggish, very corrupt. And you saw that it was written from inside. It fell in 11 days. Uh, without it is uh, foreign prote protector protectors. Uh, Russians, Iranians, the thugs of, 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 of Hezbollah and other uh, sectarian militias, the regime, we, all the world, so it um, fell uh, in 11 days because, because it is extremely rotten from inside. So this was my experience, and I, I feel very hopeful for the future of Syria because of the release of prisoners, because they gave, they have given the top priority for releasing these prisoners from many places, in Aleppo, in Hama, in Homs, and uh, now in Damascus, especially this, this uh, torture camp uh, uh, of Sydney. Today, I seem <clears throat> is the 11th anniversary of the disappearance of your wife. Can you explain what happened to her? Well, it, because Syria, especially in 2013, the, uh, so uh, the third year of the Syrian uprising is the most brutal, the most painful, the most tragic year of our struggle. Uh, so um, Syria, uh, by that time, let's remember that it was the uh, intervention, military intervention of Hezbollah in Syria. It's the year of the appearance of Daesh, uh, ISIS. Uh, it is the year of the chemical massacre. It is the year of the uh, sordid American-Russian deal to absolve the regime from uh, uh, violating the international law and uh, disarming, taking away it is chemical weapons. We find now that they were aware all the time that they, the regime kept a lot of uh, uh, chemical weapons. So they were happy, or they were not unhappy that these uh, uh, arms were uh, used against only against the Syrian people. Now they are targeting them. So because Syria by that year was turning to a paradise of uh, uh, immunity and unaccountability, many factions um, seized the opportunity and started to act like the regime. Daesh is one of them. Another Salafi uh, military formation called Jaish al-Islam in Eastern Ghouta uh, was one. And they took Samira, my wife, Samira al-Khalil, with Razan Zaytuna, 
uh, internationally known human rights activist and a very good writer, while Hamada, her husband, and Nadab Hamadi, a lawyer and a poet. This happened today, 11 years ago. And for me, it is as uh, much as I am happy of the um, liberation of the big pa bigger parts of my country. Um, at the same time, I see, I see it as a criterion to judge these new developments. The to to know to liberate my wife and my friends, or to know about their fate and to bring the culprits uh, before justice. This is very important. We know the criminals by names. And I, 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 this is an opportunity for me just to say these simple words. This should end now. It is like releasing thousands of people from jail and trying to find out about the fate of others. Samira is one of these people. Samira and Razan and Wa'al and Nadam are among these people. And we, I, we need to know. We need them among us. We need to know about their fate. And we need to see a measure of justice. This will tell if the future of Syria will be better than it is past. I have a qu final question, Yassine. In one of your posts, you write, quote, we can't embrace HTS's military effectiveness against the regime while ignoring its ideology. In this last minute we have, if you can explain, uh, the, one of the groups, the leading group that overthrew the Assad regime. <laughs> I mean, this was written in uh, January 2013, so 11 years ago. Um, and someone uh, uh, digged it out and published it, uh, re, uh, uh, republished it on uh, X. So, of course, as you see, they are very effective militarily, but they have an ideology. And this is one reason why I am a, I am a bit um, worried, because this is one re this tension between the Islamic uh, formation of the new liberators and the general Syrian nationalism is one of my uh, sources of worries. Besides, the Assadism is not, not yet de dead. Assad is gone very cheaply and very uh, he showed how sordid and how how trivial he was but assadism is still there in the form of sectarianism corruption uh, thuggery uh, uh, um, uh, security complexes still we don't know the fate about uh, uh, about them and unhealthy a, a third reason why i am a bit worried is a brutally unhealthy regional and international environment. You mentioned that the Israelis seized some Syrian um, uh, lands, and they they bombed in Damascus after Damascus was taken from the regime. This is colonial. Uh, 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 I am not surprised by it, but this, Israel has been a plague for us for for decades and for generations. But this is this will not go away from the Syrian memory. Memory. Uh, Yassine Al Hajj. If I have time, uh, we we just have thirty okay. seconds. So uh, uh, the reasons why I am a bit hopeful, I talked about my worries, is that the release of prisoners, the the return of displaced people from Turkey. Uh, from within the country, uh, the camps are almost empty, and from Turkey and from Lebanon, and I guess many Euro many people from Europe are planning uh, to to go back. It is a Syrianized thing. Uh, uh, it is not like what happened in Iraq uh, um, 20, 21 years ago. The Syrians did it, and with minimal violations so far. I guess this is a solid basis mm. to build on for a better future. Yassine al Hajj Salah, Syrian writer, former political prisoner from 1980 to 1996, author of several books, including The Impossible Revolution, Making Sense of the Syrian Tragedy. Uh, he was speaking to us from Paris.